Hey guys, Larissa here with Your Labor Nurse. I'm excited to be continuing on my series of medications that can be used in labor. Um, I'm specifically kind of starting with medications that are used in inductions or augmentations. So today I'm going to be going over the medication called Cervidil. Um, again, like I always say in my videos, I'm not a doctor, a nurse practitioner, or a midwife. I'm cur currently a labor and delivery nurse. I'm going to school to be a midwife and a women's healthcare nurse practitioner. Um, so I have a lot of classes and tests ahead of me, but I use these videos to just educate you. I want you to feel informed about your labor process and kind of understand the different things that can be used so that when you walk into the hospital, you're not walking into the unknown. So today I'm going to talk about Cervidil. Like I said before, a lot of times this is going to be used for an induction. The purpose of Cervidil is to dilate your cervix. So this is used a lot of times for women when it's their first baby because their cervix isn't dilated very far. And a lot of times you're being induced, meaning the medications are causing you to go into labor for a medical reason, meaning the baby needs to come out for a certain reason because the risks of you remaining pregnant um, go higher for different complications. So um, for whether it's for you or for baby, depending upon your um, diagnosis. So. Cervidil. What is it? What does it do? What can you expect when it's placed? How is it placed? All that kind of stuff. So Cervidil, if you want some fancy medical terms, is um, it has dinoprostone, which is similar to a naturally occurring prostaglandin in your body, and basically that helps you to dilate. So it makes the cervix softer and it helps that to dilate. This medication is FDA approved for dilation, for causing the cervix to soften, and it is inserted via a vaginal exam. So um, similar to how you can expect during labor, I have another funny video about vaginal exam. So if you don't know what to expect for that, you can check that video out. Um, so via a vaginal exam, this medication is inserted. It kind of looks like a mini tampon, sort of. So it's this small little, um, Again, it looks like a tampon, it looks like cotton, and it has a really long string attached to it. So it is inserted and then kind of like threaded up as well so that everything's inside. Um, it usually stays for about 12 hours is the kind of common length of time. And you do have to stay still and like not get up and walk and move for at least two hours after it's initially inserted. And then you can still get up and go to the bathroom and all that kind of stuff. Um, the nice thing about Cervidil is that it's easily removed because it has that string attached. So as I've spoken about in other videos, um, with different side effects of medication, specifically with this medication, side effects include tachycystole, which means um, contractions that are too close together, and um, a fetal distress, which means that the baby's heart rate is reacting to the medications and or the uterine contractions. Um, so this isn't uncommon, and that's why when you're given Cervidil, you're being you're placed on the monitors continuously. So we're always measuring the contractions, and we're looking at baby's heart rate to make sure that they're, the contractions aren't too often and that baby's responding okay. Um, if for any reason baby were to um, have uh, a heart rate that decelerates um, or reacts or the contractions are too close together, we would... The nurses would probably try the interventions first of giving you fluid, turning you, trying different things like that before the medication has to be removed. However, if none of those things work effectively, the medication can easily be removed. So that's something that's really neat about Cervidil is that it's, again, easy to remove. What you can kind of expect on your end um, as the patient receiving the medication is a lot of women feel crampy. So this medication isn't to make contractions really strong. It's just to make the cervix dilate. And then one of the side effects is contractions. However, these often feel more like cramps. In my other video on Pitocin, I kind of talk about how those make contractions stronger. And that's where you're going to feel more of the labor pains as they talk about them. So yeah, I hope that this video on Cervidil um, helps. It, again, is used for inductions. A lot of times women who are first-time moms whose cervix are not dilated um, or barely dilated because you want them to be dilated a little bit farther. 
Um, I would definitely check out my next video that I'm going to be posting, and that's on Cytotech. And there I'm going to compare the two a little bit more. So Cervidil, which is FDA approved, it's pretty dang expensive, um, and but it can be removed. Um, and then I'm going to talk about Cytotech and why that is used and kind of the differences because they're both used to make the cervix soften and dilate. So I just think it's important. Um, it depends on what your doctor, nurse practitioner, or midwives prescribes. Um, and to be able to have that conversation if it is an option or to be able to ask them why they prefer one or the over the other so that you know walking in what medication you're getting, how it's different maybe than this, how Cervidil and Zytotec are different from one another and how to expect um, your labor to kind of proceed from there, especially if you're being induced. So check out my next video on Cytotec. Um, and be sure to like, comment below, and subscribe. Great, thanks guys.